Robert Ashland is Senior Vice President of Policy at the Business Council of Canada, a former advisor to the Prime Minister uh, and the former Finance Minister, Bill Morneau, who joins us here in studio. Thanks for your time. Thank you for uh, inviting me. What, uh, what prompted you to, to, to make this comment, this, put out this report? So basically the government has set uh, in the last five years uh, three different fiscal targets, which are important in themselves, but I've never met them. And so when Minister Freeland in the last fall update came with the 1% target, 1% of GDP target for deficit in 2026, we just did the math. And right now we have a structural deficit of about 1.4 GDP. So that would imply a reduction of about $12 billion a year, either on cuts, on revenues, but given the, the forecast for growth, and where we are with this government to keep spending about 5%, well above 5% per year, the math is very challenging. We, I mean, we saw when uh, those numbers were shared, we saw reaction from a lot of players in the, in the business community. Has something changed between that update and, and where we are right now, just in terms of the outlook? Or I think the forecast is look uh, a bit more gloomy. And when I look at this year, we're at 0.5. Next year, I think, who knows, uh, forecasts have been difficult uh, lately. And I look at, at spending pressures. Um, defense, you know, if Trump gets reelected, there'll be huge pressure on defense. Energy transition, this is ongoing. Um, NDP wants a pharmacare uh, program that would cost billions of dollars per year. So, you know, fiscal prudence is important. So um, it seems like you're... Uh interested in, in kickstarting a conversation around yeah. things that could be put in place to see some of those fiscal goals achieved yeah. given some of these lingering uncertainties. Is that fair? I think it's important for the government to, to be credible when it sets out fiscal targets. And for the financial markets, they want you to see that the government is holding to its targets. And what we're seeing now is not the case. It's not that government has problem, uh, you know, borrowing, uh, having markets uh, land um, their debt. It's just that it's very challenging uh, for the for the government to be credible right now on these these targets to keep setting and, and missing. You know, what would be some of the things that you'd like to hear from them to yeah. add to the idea of being credible and and committing, let's say, to some of these fiscal goals? I think setting a serious program review would be important. And again, I'm not talking about huge cuts, just controlling. The, how you how spending is controlled uh, over the next year, uh, and just be sure that you have the buffers in your fiscal framework to meet the unforeseen going forward. What do you think are some of the ramifications if we we don't see um, s s some of those uh, ideas uh, uh, put to work, and 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 yeah. ultimately, you know, some of these concerns you have about what the fiscal picture ends up looking like come true. Essentially, what we're seeing is debt servicing costs rising. So we're putting more than 10% of our revenues federally to service the debt. As this amount continue to rise, and it will, um, you have less for preserving your social programs, everything Canadians rely on. And this is the danger, is that the more you put on debt servicing, the less you have for everything else. And this is what we want to make sure to preserve all the good things that can Canadians expect from the government to remain. Yeah, and um, in terms of investment, business investment, that kind of stuff, obviously you talk to your stakeholders yeah. as well. Is there, is there a risk on that front, do you Well, think? the risk for businesses is eventually when the math doesn't work and they see a trend, what they see down the line is either higher taxes, which are not great for businesses, or uh, spending that is kind of out of control and uh, will eventually be cut a bit like we did in the 90s. And those are not good outcomes. We don't want to go there, I think. So obviously figuring out the fiscal path forward is something that you know, ties very much back to what business is thinking about, some of the economic questions we have to be thinking about. Uh, in this country, uh, we talk about, feels like on a daily basis, things like affordability. Um, and you, know, you often see that through the lens of things like housing and the fact that there hasn't necessarily been enough supply, especially yeah. given the immigration policy. Actually, one development uh, out of Ottawa today was this push towards essentially a cap on the number mm -hmm. of foreign students mm -hmm. as trying to figure out how we deal with the housing story. How, how, do you, how does your organization think about addressing the housing piece? Well, this is a structural problem that came to being, you know, a decade ago with low interest rates uh, keep rising and the problem being worse now. So it's going to take some time to fix it. I'll say, John, though, what is important is that fiscal policy 
works with monetary policy. And right now we have a fiscal policy that is still very aggressive and that makes the, the job of the Bank of Canada harder. So we're straining a bit on, on the fiscal side will help the bank do its job, bring back inflation. And once we're at 2%, this will be good news for aff affordability in Canadians. In other words, even though everybody talks about central banks like the Bank of Canada in fighting inflation, that the government's own spending priorities can play a role in helping with the inflation story long term exactly. as well. Exactly. We're at 17% of GDP and program spending. That's high historically. You want to get down to maybe 15, 16%. Again, helping the bank do its job. And once we're at 2% and growth comes back, then government may, might have a bit more fiscal room to do stuff.